Hi, we're intergroup contact. I'm Jim. I'm Savatua. And I'm Joshua. I'm E. I'm Edna. And I'm Alexis. What is intergroup contact? So intergroup contact is defined as the contact between members of different groups as an effective means to reduce mutual prejudice and increase trust and forgiveness. In the article by DeConnick and DeHannons and the Dios, they mention two types of intergroup contact, direct and indirect. An example of direct contact would be encountering people who have a migration background. This would include having friends and family of a migration background, which would decrease feelings of realistic and symbolic threat. And symbolic threat is when people are biased against other groups because of perceived conflicts and beliefs. An example of indirect contact would be the news giving people a false perception about refugees. So people who have consumed public news have a more positive attitude because public broadcasters are painting refugees as victims by highlighting the humanitarian aspects. But those who have consumed commercial news had a more negative attitude because commercial networks were portraying refugees as a threat to host societies through a more negative frame. Impact towards intergroup attitudes. The quality of direct intergroup contact is more meaningful than the amount of interactions between different ethnic groups. Positive contact isn't necessary in order to improve the attitudes of refugees or attitudes towards them. Facilitate integration towards local societies so that strategies to improve attitudes of the public towards refugees can be promoted. Negative impact is actually more impactful since it triggers our evolutionary fight or flight response. Real world applications. Mm -hmm. There are multiple real world applications of the type of direct and indirect intergroup contact between the public, media, and refugees. An example is when a biased media outlet cherry picks and shows what they wish to show to the public to further prove their point. However, it shouldn't base opinions on anything you see in the media. For example, people of Middle Eastern descent getting stopped by airport security because they are being racially profiled as being part of the refugee group. Another example is an immigrant person watching the news and calling the immigrants the wrong race due to the media poor categorization of the immigrants' active race. The goal is to increase direct intergroup contact with anyone that has a migration background and not just refugees. Right. The second article um, is from Reimer and his colleagues, in which uh, they stated how individuals structure their social identities from uh, various group rules and the intergroup inter interactions and its influence on reducing prejudice by adopting more inclusive social identities. As you can see on the pattern here, um, from first one, group A and group B are not included. Um, they're called excluded um, until the next one, lower one, uh, which is pretty much like the Venn diagram uh, when they are included. Um, according to the article, there are three different ways individuals construct their in-group members as followed. Intersection, dominance, and merger. A real-life example of intersection is Burma. In the past, it was governed by the military dictatorship, and they spread propaganda towards ethnic people living in uh, other parts of Burma, Foster fostering extreme low inclusion identity structure leading to Burmanization, which has essentially built this mindset on how only true Burmese people who are Buddhist should be the only in-group members. It is intersect 
by nationality, which is Burma, uh, national, religion, uh, Buddhist, and ethnic, which would be Burmese people. As time progressed, people start to adopt more progressive thinking, which then leads to dominant structure, which is when some Burmese people expand their social identity to anyone of uh, Burmese national, regardless of their religion, whether it's Buddhism, Christianity, or Hinduism, or Islamic. Currently, the people of Myanmar hold a merger structure due to unfortunate atrocities following the military coup and the death of hundreds of civilians, including children. Now, all Burmese people, ethnic people, uh, ethnic minority people, and even Rohingya, who are also minorities, um, who are all faced with oppression and racism, they're now all united against a common evil enemy, which is the military dictatorship. Now, in addition to social identity structure, Raymer and other researchers found that positive contact with out-group members foster cross-group friendship and more inclusive social identity and view them with more, more favorable attitudes unlike negative contact, which can lead to less inclusive identity. As of right now, uh, people of Myanmar who want freedom are experiencing positive contact with uh, Rohingya minority people and the ones who were once shunned by Burmese people due to less inclusive structure. Now that Burmese ethnic minorities and Rohingya minorities alike are united against this evil military dictator and his followers, whom they're now facing negative contact with everyone else. Um, even though they're Burmese, the fact that they are committing all these killings already led to the people of Myanmar to exclude them from our country called Myanmar. Thank you. Right, to further uh, broaden this concept of, uh, in which we're talking about color blindness, which can be categorized as a positive contact, I believe. Uh, which is approach to diversity that seeks to overlook or ignore differences of race and ethnicity and culture. And what I love specifically is from um, Dr. Martin Luther King, who um, back then was hoping that his children would be one day be judged by the content of, of their character rather than by their color of their skin. And th that also bring, uh, brings us like the might suggest that acknowledging, acknowledging racial differences is itself causing division and that society would be better off if we could um, all ignore skin color and focus on our shared humanity and treat each other as, as, an, as individuals. Uh, the second uh, term we like to talk to broader broaden this concept is it could be negative contact, which is invisibility. Uh, this phenomenon occurs when historical representation representation and lack of uh, contemporary presentation representation excuse me obscure the status or even the existence of an ethnic group. So the example. Uh, featured by these uh, these authors as Native Americans in the United States, or for whom uh, most of the public representations of their group feature outdated uh, tropes. And this influences the way in which individuals see themselves uh, as not belonging, as well as how they are treated or excluded uh, from social rules by, by the members of other groups. Um, the question that our article is trying to answer is if social groups with a higher rate of intergroup contact with immigrants are less prejudiced than those having a lower contact rate. In the movie Freedom Riders, an example of intergroup contact is shown. In the movie, students have been in the same class yet know nothing about their peers. After the teacher uses an icebreaker method to get a deeper understanding of the students, lives, that's when everything starts to change. The teacher starts asking questions about losing family members and friends to gang violence or knowing someone that is in jail. The more the questions go on, the peers start to sympathize for each other. Even though they all came from different backgrounds and ethnicities, by the end of the movie, their struggles and contacts bring them together. 
Through intergroup contact, this reduces intergroup bias, anxiety, and creates trust. Due to the emotional process, contact reduces prejudice from close relationships with others in different groups. We tend to feel less threatened with the group and more likely to feel empathetic with that person with more contact. Next slide. According to the findings in each study that were conducted in, in the article, people's positive attitude towards immigrants, foreign students, and different ethnic groups came from the amount of intergroup contact each person would have. People with more intergroup contact were more likely to have a positive attitude and show no prejudice. However, those doing little intergroup contact were more likely to show, a neg show negative attitudes and more prejudice. Next slide. Throughout the findings, we can find that there is a need of more intergroup contact among people from different parts of the world. So basically, intergroup contact is needed all around the world. And there is also a need of more multiculturalism acknowledgement because, pe because we often blind ourselves with prejudice without actually practicing intergroup contact. And that is our last slide, and these are our references.